And we're live with another podcast. Mike here, Jeff again. Uh, a little later this in the week for our podcast, but still getting it done. <laughs> yep, still getting it done, and yep. still uh, a so decent amount to talk about. Yeah, true. The our t- the shootout winner last night for the Flyers uh, almost lost, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, uh, some s- news around the league as well. Of course, everything. with some uh, injury updates going on around yep. the league, a. Uh, Anaheim signing a 24-year-old defenseman mm-hmm. that name should uh, ring some bells. Exactly, some ring some bells. Um, yeah. So, oh, and of course we got a uh, a, a new father in the Flyers yes, locker Mac room. Yes, Mac Daddy. <laughs> Mac Daddy is his father. We gotta call. <laughs> we gotta convince the Flyers players to call him that somehow. Andrew McDonald was uh, out last night, even yep. though it was said by uh the or it was said during practice today that he was going to stretch regardless of his child being yes born. uh McDonald's wife gave birth to their second child early this morning and uh both McDonald and Haxel confirmed that like you said he's being scratched yes. anyway McDonald an- acknowledged he probably did come back too soon and could use a reset mm-hmm. Haxel would not put a time frame on that which is interesting yeah. because if you know even Mac thinks he came back too soon. Oh, yeah, he definitely did. What's and you could tell by his oh play. Yeah. It's just, what's the point of rushing him back there if is you know n- he's not yeah. ready? You know? And even with that, I guess the only downside is that you're having Fallen play, and Fallen's worse than McDonald is. So, Or just send Fallen down and call up Myers. Didn't <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> Yeah, that would be because then if I guess that would have happened, then maybe Myers would have had a longer look. I think so. And the weird thing is, is Morin's not supposed to be back until <laughs> February. February, but yeah, he's been time, skating. Yeah, he's oh, skating like a bit, which quite is a, a bit. good sign for him. But it's, it's a fantastic. He's not coming back anytime soon. But it's a right, good sign. He did have what? It was like a knee injury or yeah, knee surgery he, or something. Yeah, I thought he tore his ACL or I didn't think he tore his ACL. Um, he under. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It was uh, a torn ACL. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, because I thought it was like the same injury that um, uh, Stolars had. Mm. But also, there's a Flyers game tomorrow, too, yes. against the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's going to be a pretty big game. But uh, I guess before we get into the Flyers stuff, we can kind of touch on the news around the NHL. Yep. Oh, that's what I was going to bring up to you. Um, I'll, I'll bring this up later. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the video in a little bit, but... Yeah. Um, There's also a suspension in there, too. Well, and th- that was the uh, suspension I was going to talk to mm-hmm. you about. We could just talk about that now. And uh, also, actually, if we're going about that, um, even though I figured they probably wasn't going to get a suspension, but the hit on Limblom, the other game... Oh, yeah. Know? So, I'll let you watch that video. So, basically, the other night, the Florida Panthers were playing the Vancouver Canucks... Mike Matheson had a pretty bad yeah. hit against I Elias Pettersson. I missed it. The, 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 they'll show the replay. Look, they don't show that great of a... Um, yeah, they didn't. No, they don't show that great of a camera shot at first, but looking at it... Because if you... Oh, there, boy. There goes my ears. Um, yeah, looking at it... For the sca- oh, there goes my mic. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's starting already. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, so, Pettersson just burns Matheson on mm-hmm. a great move. Matheson clearly doesn't like it. I don't know why. It's just it's a great move. But watch him picks him up, body slams him to the ground. But the scariest part here, okay. you can see Pedersen slowly but surely getting up. The ref's right there, reaches for him, and down goes Pedersen yeah. like right away, like mm-hmm. right away. You could tell he was just not his usual yeah. self. So that's a scary thing right there to see. He only got two uh, a two game suspension. His first one. I think that's. That's his first suspension, or his yeah, he I got two game suspension, and that uh, first game actually was last night against the yeah. Flyers that he missed. Okay, I mean that's not I don't I didn't I think hate it, but game, I didn't love it. I mean compared I, to most things that happen for getting player safety involved, yeah, he just kind of tackled him. It well, was just a rough play. He does deserve a suspension. Yeah, but I think th- there's a, a suspension, no fine. doubt about that. It's just my big issue with it is he kind of was there a penalty called on the play? I want to say there was. 
that's the more of the issues if there's no call right. on the ice then. Uh, I honestly don't. I still remember. think there should if going back to the Lemon thing. I still th- think there should have yeah. been a call there. Even though right. Lemon also said um, yesterday or like the other day or whatever that, um, after practice or whatever that uh, yeah he kind of made it look worse by how he moved before getting hit. Who Lindblom? Yeah, but yeah. at the same time he could have let up. He had time to let up before. Right, Lindblom did. Uh, he was saying that, um, like he turned his shoulder or something. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting mm-hmm. how he mentioned that. I still think it should have been a penalty. Oh yeah, no. If you're no, trying no. to get rid of calls like that where you're getting hit into the boards, yeah, I know people are gonna get pissed, but you, I feel like you have to call it every time, mm-hmm. just until you kind of get this kind of thing less so or out of the league. Yep. Um, and before I forget, uh, I just got an update that Coy Crawford will return to the Blackhawks now for the first time since December of December 23rd with a concussion. So he's back in action and Cam Ward will be on the bench, which is great news for the Hawks. But uh, going back to the the hits, um, but for Matheson, the Department of Player Safety announced a suspension the other night for interference and unsportsmanlike conduct. In explaining the suspension, the video noted some hockey plays that are legal or sufficiently penalized by the on ice officials. This is not such a play. This is not a hockey play. Matheson will also lose two game checks totaling more than fifty two thousand. And uh, again, that that's nothing. Fifty two thousand is nothing. Mm-hmm. What concern uh, what concerns me is that just how forceful the slam was. Yeah. And if you haven't seen the play, the play behind the net where he kind of picks him up and exactly. just kind Cause of he, cause he kind, kind of, of like a football kind of tackle kind of thing. Basically, because yeah. Matheson kind of pinned um Pedersen, he almost like hit him and kind of lifted him in the air into the boards, and then uh, or he kind of crunched him like that uh, with Pedersen's right shoulder going into the boards, and then after he got hit there, he kind of had him picked up and uh, practically slammed him to the ground yeah. or to the ice. But um, I get it, two games because yeah, it's his first offense. It, I'm pretty, I'm certain it's his first uh, yeah. offense, but. Some things to take into factor. Again, you know, he was yeah. the first time suspension. Pedersen did get hurt on the play. Yeah, that's where you kind of have to. That's get, where you, yeah. I think if he didn't get hurt on the play, I mm-hmm. think it would just be a regular yeah. penalty. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but that's just what I feel like. Concerned fact that Matheson Ooh. has not clearly seen something. I just saw this on uh Cap friendly, but the tough thing is Justin Schultz long term IR. Yes, yep. One of the many another injuries. loss for he's out points. four months. I yeah. heard. Uh, but we can kind of trans use that as a transition. Yeah, there's a couple other injuries. Uh, Brady Gachuk will miss a month with a torn ligament in his leg. That's a big loss for them. And Paul Stasny could miss two months after suffering a lower, lower body injury earlier this season against the Sabers. Yeah. The report noted that Stasny's knee injury has left him with a timeline that could be mul- uh, multiple months or month to month. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's uh, possibly two months, but uh, we will see right now. As uh, the report o- uh, from SportingNews.com is that right now it's only up to two months so far, but we will wait and see at what happens. Yeah, but that's a. Big loss for the Penguins too. It That's really another is. big loss. Yes. They already un- has Murray been back yet? I come back. Don't yet? believe. So. I thought I saw. I know it's just a concussion, so those things kind of right. Are. I saw his name trending on Twitter the other day. Yeah. Um. Okay, it sounds like Murray. Okay, it's uh, it's uh, apparently according to PittsburghHockeyNow.com, Murray said he's fully recovered and has quote the blessing of the team's medical staff to play. Um, he uh because Casey DeSmith was starting at um or starting I should say in Montreal on Saturday mm-hmm. as in a couple of days ago, 
And here's a, a great quote from Murray right here. He said, I would not be backing up if I wasn't ready to play. Right. I was cleared before the last game. Anything So anything less than a week, loss of a concussion would fall into the quick recovery category. Symptoms for some can linger, of course. Murray continued to say, it's hard to know with injuries like that, but it's no fun to have those injuries either. So I was happy with how quickly it resolved. And I'm actually very shocked yeah. at how quickly this has resolved. Mm-hmm. I don't consider him entirely healthy, but then again, yeah. it could take months or years just to com- fully, fully recover. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but if he feels like he's ready, I guess he's ready. But this is now his third yeah. uh, concussion like of his initial career and second this calendar year. And it, I don't really want to go there because it's the fluke thing, but... The only that? thing you worry is that once he gets injured, he's kind of been injured a lot. Since he he's has kind of been. Come in. He really has been, and not just because last know. year he was an injured year, and because of that, he didn't play as well. Yep. I think he got hurt the uh, year before when they won the cup. At one point. Okay, so here is, um, ironically, the same website. Uh, I I found a, um a report for injuries for goalies in the league. And Murray, uh, basically since, I guess, coming into the league, I, I'm assuming that this is since coming into the league, um, but he, he has missed plenty of games so far. So uh, the, the hit list for Murray so far features three lower body injuries, one upper body ailment, one broken hand, and two concussions which is now three. Uh, for a 23-year-old with just 135 games, whose name including playoffs, that's quite a few trips to the trainer's room. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, taking here's a, um, a chart that the same website I was just mentioning has about several goalies in the league, if not almost every goalie in the league. Yeah. For how many times they got injured, how many mm-hmm. times they went to the IR, how many games they played, and it looks like how many games... I'm assuming this is how many games um, they've missed per injury or or just an average they play until they get injured or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, rate, rate of games played per injury. Mm-hmm. So Where's, <laughs> where's uh, Neuvert on that one? Oh, gosh, I can <laughs> tell you. Actually, I do uh, – because someone tweeted this a while ago. Uh, you're going to love this. Ready? This Ooh. is the full – uh, th- this is every single injury that Michael Neuvert has had since joining the Flyers in 2015, 2016. We might have, I'll bring it up again. Yeah. But October 1st, so during the 2015, 2016 season, he had seven injuries. Well, sorry. Um, technically five, two of them were illnesses. He's had three lower body injuries, two upper body injuries, and two illnesses from 2015 to 2016 during that season. During 2016-2017, he had two, sorry, well actually three uh, injuries and an illness, um, two lower body injuries and illness, and also that infamous uh, collapse he had yeah, against the New Jersey Devils. Yeah, that weird one. Um, which uh, somehow he got a concussion, I think, from mm-hmm. it as well. Then 2017-18, uh, he's had two illnesses and three lower body injuries, and then this season, all season, multiple hip, sur- hip surgeries, and t- September twenty first, undisclosed injury. Yep. So overall, several times, mm-hmm. and that's why. Well, he's hurt now, but why I don't see him being the backup for even when he gets healthy. Exactly. Even though I think for that, it's probably just going to be who plays better for who gets the backup. Basically. Um. So you know, life's just it's great. Mm-hmm. And also just going, because I'm looking at the standings now, Toronto is still killing it. Oh, absolutely. In seven games, only one loss. They have the most points in the NHL as a whole. They have 12 points. The next closest is Nashville with 10. Do you know what surprises me? New Jersey's undefeated at 4-0. Yeah, that is surprising. But mm. I didn't think that... Uh, okay, that's why. They have four goals against. Ah, Corey Schneider's doing well. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Carolina is still doing great. 4-2-1, nine points, leading the division, 
And uh, yeah, <laughs> the usual suspects in the Flyers, Penguins, and Capitals are not. Yeah, the exactly closest one to that is just going back to the. Yeah, uh, it's Tampa Bay with nine. Okay. Well, actually, looking at this way, Philly, Pittsburgh, and Columbus are all tied with six points, but Columbus technically has that upper edge because they're three and two. Pittsburgh's yeah. two one two, and the Flyers are three three and zero. Right. Caps are and two, two, and one. They play each other tomorrow too. So yes, that'll be a good game. That would be a great game. And then now looking at the West, Nashville's five and one. Ducks are four, one and one. Yeah. Um. So wow, Vancouver's four and two, four, two and zero. Oh. Yeah, they're they're doing great, and uh, hopefully they can get Elias Pettersson back mm-hmm. sooner rather than later because Pettersson. I still feel bad for McDa- uh, McDavid. Oh, I I feel horrible for him. Here, I'll, I'll go over some of his stats. For the best player in the NHL, I know there's going to be people who disagree or whatever, still say Crosby or whatever, but he is the best player. No, okay, r- ready for this? I mean, I'll tell you how good he is. McDavid has become the first player in NHL history to record a point on each of the team's first nine goals in a season. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah, he's really good. Not even Crosby's done that. He's Not even that Gretzky has done that. He's that good in a team... Of course, he's on the team Gretzky was on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it's not the same team. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah. and obviously it's a different generation. Yeah, and also just he's the best player, and just everything around him isn't much. And it just a show goes to show you how much of a team sport this whole thing is, and why they have to do a better job of building around him because they aren't doing Yo. enough. That's but, right. Um, so I it's guess. Uh, sorry, go ahead. We can kind of turn over to uh, the Flyers. Yep. And their game last night against the Florida Panthers, the winless Florida Panthers. Yeah, and, and that was a uh, going into the game. I was trying to be optimistic. It was yeah. A, it was a little tough of mm-hmm. a game I, because I was always worried because Flyers haven't had the best record against Florida in the past couple of years. Yes, they but they not only that, but they in general just. I don't know, just uh, on teams just that are, are not doing that well, they seem to struggle greatly. Yeah. Um, and I th- for this now sixth time, so again, literally every single game, they've given up the first mm-hmm. goal. Yeah. And uh, this is now the sixth time that's Frank Vetrano mm-hmm. scored with 2-0-2 left in the first. Yep. Assisted by uh, Morgan and McCann. Florida leads one nothing, but in the second period, the Flyers went on. The Flyers tear. went; they were just dominant. They scored five goals mm-hmm. in the second. That's crazy. And yeah, um, I think Wayne Simmons with the first one. At yep, a, a minute eighteen in the second. Yep, and Jordan Wheel got on the board his first of the year. Then Giroux, uh, a few minutes after him, Frank Vitrano, his second of the game and season. Morgan, si- or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after Giroux, then Simmons and Giroux scored again, making it five to two. But Mike Hoffman, and the Flyers killer, Mike Hoffman scored again. Yep, that's right, Mike Hoffman scoring again. And then and, they uh, kind of it was came five back. three. Then in the third period, Evgeny Dadunov and Alexander Barkov, who by the way is their new captain. Yes, and the Hoffman year. goal was a power play goal too. Yes, uh, Panthers were one for three on the power play. Flyers zero for two. Mm-hmm. Also, and Moose was pulled from the game too. Yes. after giving up the last goal. That was an interesting call. That I think I don't think it's that. Inter- that's not that surprising to me. Well, they no, were up five two, and then they right. But came I back. think it was just I why mean, at five four. You know, I don't know because I I think it was just more of like a wake up call maybe to the team. That's what a lot of people were saying, but that's um, what it pro- most likely was. That's what it was, or what it probably is, and they didn't want to hang them out the dry this yeah. time. Um, and again, it just shows you how poor the defense has looked right. this season. It's uh, it's been a struggle for them defensively and everything. So. Right. The one positive defensively is everyone except for Provorov uh, got a point last night. <laughs> That's fun. Gouda, Sanham, Haig, Follin, and Go- and Ghost all got one assist. <laughs> nice. And I did actually have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Is it me, or I don't know if you've... Kno- well, how, how many of the Flyers games have you watched recently? Uh, Last night's game was the one game I wasn't Okay, really but you've at watch. least watched a good Yeah, I watched okay. all of them except for that one. Okay. 
Is it me or has yes, our God? Oh yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to. And the fires one should not get through one door. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't really clarify that. We just kind of fended off with the <laughs> you know the, the, they're a top, they had a five score lead. that last goal yeah. was five five and like yeah. Oh, and we're, we're we're just gonna leave it all for suspense. Yeah, <laughs> but um. I don't know why, but is it me or has Ivan Provorov not looked he's like himself? Do you think no, he's he struggling hasn't. with the injury or what? No, I think it's just an early season kind of okay. slump kind of thing. Um, I, don't know, I feel like I think they didn't get him into that many preseason games. I think it's like maybe the last two he was in. Right. So maybe he didn't get the best there, but that's Provorov. So I, I'm not I'm too worried about no. him. The only thing I am worried about is his – Chipping in too much. That's been a little problem. Yes. For him. And a lot of black shots coming from him, too. Yeah, I just and I don't like this stat, but he wasn't minus two last night. Yeah. I, I still am not the biggest fan of Hackstall's system of no. where the, he has the defenseman pinch in. Yeah. I, I don't know. The only thing, the only, because I know probably it's another guy who's uh, mobile and everything and won't really want to stand still, but you have Ghost who's specialty is that so you kind right. of hope at some point that he kind of uh, lets go do his thing and then he kind of follow up because I think what he's trying to do is maybe overthink things and it's kind of how last year he was tied for deleting goals he feels he can he absolutely could but be offensive too and I think that's kind right. of been it so I mean He's definitely not been the worst. They've all looked bad at points, so it's not just pro rough, it's kind yeah. of everyone. I will say maybe Ghost and Sandheim have probably been the ones that made the least amount of mistakes out of the whole group. Because most of the time right. I don't really notice Ghost that much or Sandheim, so compared to the ones that aren't doing that well, that's a good sign. <laughs> and so Pro Rough played twenty seven minutes last night too, so mm-hmm. So yeah, it's not it's that surprising. So, I mean, you ho- you like Provorov and everything, and you hope that he he's not susceptible of being this great, right? All the time, he's still a player. He's still like anyone else. So, he's gonna have some times like this. Yeah, so. no, I agree. And he's that's definitely fair. gonna bounce back. Yeah, I mean, he typically always bounces. He's a competitor. Back. We saw him cry at the end of the. Uh, yeah, that 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 was that was pretty tough. And to maybe see. it's also him coming off of. Uh, his injury too. Yeah, because it was an injury off season for him, and he's trying to maybe play with that. I think that's a really good point you're making there. Because I forgot, he got not s- many people. I don't think he got surgery or this off. He didn't. Yeah, so he he's probably not. he's playing with, trying to probably play with kind of yeah. that new mentality and yeah. everything. That's a very interesting point you brought up. Um, because I honestly forgot that he that was his surgery. first time ever being hurt, at least yeah. as a flyer. I don't yeah. know, it was junior way of being hurt or whatever. I honestly, I don't think well, he does got that thing you can't brought up. Say minors too, not minors, uh, juniors um, or just NHL for, for the injury report. Yeah, that was only for goalies in the NHL, okay. and that was recently. That's g- okay. Maybe, we can, um, just, maybe I we can look that up and try see to look up. Because um, it could be Pro Ruff's like first kind of comeback from an injury kind of thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just. I have noticed Oops. that too. There's been times like, oh, Pro Ruff, why'd you do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of moments, but then you like, you forgive him because it's Pro Ruff. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's I saw like, it's a tweet okay. yesterday or the it's other okay. day saying, um, Gudis hurts uh, Kateri and the. Uh, uh, Warm ups and everyone flips shit. Yeah, right. But, uh, Pro Rob does this. It's okay. It's just freak accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, and because that's uh, what happens. Because we yes. like Pro Rob that much, and yeah. But pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you just kind of hope they turn around better. Because yeah. I think they. Well, I think this is actually a much bigger win than people will realize yeah um, it's one of the it's sh- sure it's you know it's a 6-5 win you, you sure. blew a 5-2 lead but you came back and yeah. won 6-5 in a shootout against a winless Florida team you didn't and now you didn't completely at blow up you didn't like right kind of like give up on the game like this shit. was partially a wake up call because you saw oh, yeah. Elliot get pulled at the fourth mm-hmm. goal Pickard came in you know gave up the tying goal but that's alright whatever yeah 
he held on in overtime and sh- then again, uh, yeah. the Flyers kind of controlled overtime. They even had a power play. They did, but they didn't really do much with it. Right, but in because of that, it was only their second power play of the game, right. too. But but because of that power play, they were able to control overtime. And what I liked a lot because I didn't see the game, but yeah, you I was busy it. during the game and I was just able to listen to the radio of like the last like minute, sure, and third to the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, what I did hear was on an overtime, they finally put Sanheim on overtime. Yes. Last year, they never did it. They would always put McDonald f- as the third line uh, defenseman. It they would always be Ghost, or Pro- Ghost, then Provorov, then McDonald, then back to Ghost, Provorov. Right. Uh, Sanheim would never get that chance. Someone out on the ice that I was not. Th- I think they looked Weiss. pair out on the ice they had during Weiss out there. That was, it was Weiss. Okay, yeah. maybe it was him. Because it it was one of them that I was out there in overtime. I was like, why? why? No, like literally, there was a minute but then I was left like, yeah. in overtime, and you have him out there. Mm-hmm. Explain Haxtell. I can't. Please. Uh, you can't explain what Haxtell does. But then I was like, wait, I guess Patrick is hurt. But then you're like, well, you have a boy off. You have all these other guys that we'd prefer Connect to have. Me. I would yeah. rather have Lawton. Nothing I'd else rather Lawton, have Raffle out there. Yeah, uh, I would rather have. And Lawton had. I would rather have Elliot out there. <laughs> And also on skates, the That's helmet boring. thing or whatever the Flyers do, Lawton won that too. Oh yeah. So Lawton had another. <gasps> Lawton had another good game. So let's get to know clearly. If he, he was, was the uh, the player of the game, because uh, yeah. the team they got rid of the Rick Fla- uh, Flair robe, and now they have a uh, new okay. they have a new uh, player of the game thing, and you sport some sort of interesting f- uh, motorcycle bike yeah. helmet. So, you know, that's... They have been using him a lot. Because even, like, if you look at... um, He was tied with Gudis for the most minutes on the shorthanded. Hey, I'm fine with that. Two minutes, 54 seconds. I'm good with that. Pro Rolf, obviously, had the most with with three minutes in a second. Yes. Um, It kind of shows you that Lawton and, I guess, um, Couturier, too, are kind of their Lawton played 15 and a half minutes. Yeah. During the game. Um... Overall, I mean, compared to the first line, which yeah, played so like 20 <laughs> minutes, but... Provrov played 27.41. Yeah. Gossip's played tw- just over 24 minutes. Drew, 23 minutes. Katori, 23. Vorchek, 23. Oh, Vorchek. I was going to say, I'm missing someone else there. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. Vorobi have played eight minutes. Vorobi have played eight minutes. That upsets That's, me. That upsets that me. That upsets me. They benched him. They did the uh, connecting thing last year. I hate that. I hate that so much. But I got yeah, he put him with Latero and Latero only put eight and a half minutes. A little less, but right around there. How Raffle do you only played expect him to grow if you play him for eight minutes. No, and why do you put him with Latero and Weiss? That's not gonna help him. That's why you need when Patrick comes back, and move the thing that Wheeler also down sucks to is maybe the fourth line and bench at least Latero if yeah. not Weiss. Or both. Simmons only played twelve minutes. That's a little surprising. But Raffle played only 13 then again, minutes, it, but he was on the fourth line. But so. the reason why it's actually also not so surprising why Simmons only played 12 minutes is at one point... But he, with the 12 minutes he had, he obviously did well with. He, well, yes. Uh, but I'm saying... I he think, also had a fight. He, yeah, well, that's he what was going to bring up. He was just away from uh, I Gordy I think... Howell. Yes, he was. I think that in that fight, he might have gotten... A, 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 someone got a good pop in on him. Yeah. So I think he kind of had a head off for some Maybe. repairs or something. Mm-hmm. But he, I think he also had a 10-minute misconduct. Yeah, um, he, total minutes. He got 14 penalty minutes. Yeah, so 10-minute misconduct. Yeah, for the sure. most by anyone. So he, he <laughs> must have stood up for one. someone. Yeah. Because it didn't, I get, because I don't know what caused the fight or whatever. Because like, obviously, yeah. like I said before, I wasn't watching the game. And I'm guessing, did you? I guess that didn't happen when you were watching the game either. No. That happened in probably in the second. Because I'm assuming it must have been a hit because Simmons... Yeah, to be the person that comes in there to protect the guy, and the ten minute thing is usually because, of yeah, that and everything. So, yeah. Um, but I guess uh, with that we can kind of lead into the game tomorrow night. Kind of yes, we can. Flyers are hosting. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. As we said before, they're both. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, the game is in Columbus. They are not yes. hosting them. Nope. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, so they're facing Bobrovsky. Mm-hmm. That should not be fun. 
Blackman's never fun with Bobrovsky. No. <laughs> Their leading goal scorer is... Oh, sorry. Uh, point score is... Well, actually, it's a couple people. Mm-hmm. No, I lied. Um, it's only one. It's Panarin. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's no surprise there. It's That's the yeah. question with them, because I guess now we can kind yeah. of talk um, about Columbus a little bit, too, because... Yes. That's a whole kind of question mark. Because I want to... Because Clo- this is actually... Another. This is a big year for this Columbus. Is, this is huge because they know they're losing Panarin no matter and what. Bobrovsky. And most likely Bobrovsky. Now, I, did Bobrovsky ever flat out say, just like Panarin, that this is my final season with them? I don't think he's come out and publicly said But it, he's but implied it? Yeah. Okay. I th- But Panarin and has like what essentially... That, like, I remember, I guess maybe it was after one, like, intermission or something, they were talking about Columbus and they, like, Definitely said Pro- Bobrovsky is gone too. Yeah, I'm not taking much into that either, but it seems like he could also be another one that's rumored to be going to. Yeah, but with that, you're losing two key pieces, <laughs> especially if you lose Bobrovsky. You can lose Panarin, fine, whatever. But yeah, because the thing is, is that for Panarin, see, he, he's a what a winger? Winger. winger. All right, I was gonna say centers are. Better to build around, but and and, and a center that I think that, and they already Columbus have a, can. They already have a good D pair. Yes, number one D pair is Seth Jones and um, what's his name? Wierenski. Wierenski. a phenomenal yeah. kid. Uh, but the thing is, is that really quickly before we go back to Bobrovsky, because I do want to get more into him, is that the player that I could see after or er, uh, Fl- was long gone as the captain. Pierre Luc Dubois, he went third overall in 2015. Yeah, this kid, he, I think he's. Nah, gonna, I think it's going to go to Seth Jones or. Okay, uh, I mean, I think that's fair. Jones is going to be a good captain or too. Wierenski, one of those. Oh, I would love to see Wierenski as because captain. Wierenski was in the same draft and he was drafted higher. Or no, tw- yeah, 2015, right? Uh, or 2016. All right, so let me look this up. He uh, was in the Pro Rough draft. Okay, I might have these drafts mixed up. Oh, I'm sorry. I do, because Pierre-Luc Dubois drafted third overall in 2016. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wierenski, uh, he third was, pick. I think, he was the eighth. Eighth pick. Right yeah, now. eighth overall yeah. In, the, in the pro overall draft in 2015. Mm-hmm. I love how we're just calling it the Pro Rolf draft and not the McDavid draft. It's the same draft, no matter <laughs> what. It's probably the best draft that's happened in a while. Since 2003. Yeah. And... That was a fun draft. Which is why, you, if you, because the fun thing to do now is if that draft happened again, where would all these guys fall? Because even Connecting was in that draft too. Yes. Let's not forget. <laughs> yes, that was a great. But yeah, all, just and the, also the fact that the Bruins had three picks back to back to back and they didn't pick any of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Um, but I will tell you some of the top picks in just the first round of 2003 of that mm-hmm. famous draft. So, ready for this? Flory, mm-hmm. Eric Stahl. The, these are the ones that stand out the most. Yeah. R- Ryan Suter. They're still playing. Dion F- Phaneuf. Uh, Andre Kostitsin. Jeff Carter. Dustin Brown. Brent Seabrook. Zach mm-hmm. Reese, Ryan Getzloff. Brent Burns. Who went as... Um, actually, he did go as the defenseman. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Kessler. Mike Richards. Corey Perry. In just the first round round. Oh, and Brian Boyle. Uh, and then later... You eventually have Shea Weber, Corey Crawford. You have who else? David Backus, Jimmy Howard. Trying to find some of the top. Louis Erickson, you can consider short. Dan Carcillo won the third round that year. Um, Alexander Picard. Uh, there, there's, I think, maybe just one more name that really stood out there, but yeah. I guess not. But but this draft is but kind anyway, of competing you, with you, that you one. You get the point. you look at this and you think of Arizona and going with um, Cra- or no, Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom's like, wow, Strom's like the one guy that hasn't really touched the yeah. or had the success that these other guys have had. Yeah, so here's the top 10 in the 2015 draft. McDavid, Eichel, Strom, Mitch Marner, who went fourth overall. Uh, Noah Hannafin, who got traded yeah, to Calgary, right? To Calgary, which I think, because the craziest thing is, is that analysts are calling Noah Hannafin the best defenseman in that draft class besides no. Provorov. Besides Provorov, That's no one even mentioned Warensky that no. year. I still think Provorov's the best defenseman oh, out of that draft class. Uh, Warensky went 
eighth overall just to pick after Provorov. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pavel Zaka was sixth overall. Team Amir, great pick at nine. Mika Rantanen, fantastic pick at 10 for Colorado. Yeah. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, he went 14th overall. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Boston picks, it was 13... Uh, 14, 15. 13 through 15. Jacob, uh, Zabriel, mm-hmm. Dabrowski, and then Zachary Sanishin. Yep. Haven't heard of picks of 13, 15, but Dabrowski was... That was yeah. a great pick at 14. The mm-hmm. other picks, not so much. At least two I know of. Yeah. Um, some other picks I can tell you right away. Detroit, 19th overall. Evgeny Sivent. Sivnetchikov, the brother of Andre Sivnetchikov, the second overall pick in this past year's draft. Brock Bozer, 23rd overall. Travis Connecting, 24th overall. Yeah. I think the second round even had a couple guys, too. Second round? Yeah. Um, Sebastian Ajo from yep, Carolina. It That's it. Uh, who else? There was... That was a good draft class. That year. I think it, it was, again, it was the best draft class since 2003, mm-hmm. but... Uh, and even still in the first round. Oh, Matthew Barzell. How could I forget his yeah. name? 16th overall to Islanders. And Kyle Connor to win a pick the next pick, 17th. That's a pretty solid mm-hmm. pick right there. And then just to think, that draft was for, uh, if it would have been a little sooner, Austin Matthews, right? Would have been that draft if his birthday was a little sooner. Yep. That would have been would, If that would have happened, Buff. Or, yeah, because. Edmonton won't have passed Here's on the thing, no though. No passing on McDavid. So yeah, yeah, well, would, I know. He would have been on Buffalo, and then third was Eichel Carolina. would have went... No, third was Arizona. So, yeah. Are you talking about 2015? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Eichel would have been on Arizona. Uh, Most likely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, who knows who Toronto would have picked? Probably right. still Marner. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, no, it's always... Cause that's it's something fun I, to think about those things. It like, really is. No, because I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's always fun to... Because pr- it's weird to think about how if he would have been born a couple of days before or whatever, yep. he would have been in that draft, and that just yep. would have made the best draft Uh ever. And that would have made Patrick Laine go first overall in 2016. The reason why I said that is because Mitch Marner the year before, and then they got Austin Matthews. <laughs> and look yep. what they're doing now. Yep. That, that along that's with, pretty crazy. As long with Babcock and uh, now John Tavares, now John Tavares and Marlowe, they had the veterans. They just not the yep. defense, but no. But I always do love going back, yeah, into drafts mm-hmm. and seeing where players go. Which is why you think I know it's not really a bus, but Strom's kind of a bus if you look at those top ten. That is fair to say. Um, I mean, he's been the best player in the AHL. I'm not gonna. Right. Fault him on that. I do. So looking at stats, right? Actually, He's, hold on. Yeah, I think he led in points last year in the AHL or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he led with fifty-three points in fifty games. Yeah. He's only played in five games so far, and mm-hmm. he has one goal. And yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how he looks, but mm-hmm. um, right. Yeah, and, and then I think because uh, in twenty sixteen, we also have his brother because we. You know, we like gang brothers. Yes. Except yeah, for the do. Kachucks. We didn't get a Kachuk brother. I wish. <laughs> uh, um, Brady Kachuk, he's another special player. Yeah. He's he's the best. He was the one you said that got hurt, right? Yeah. He has yeah. a torn ligament in his leg. Mm-hmm. So that's no fun. Right. But um, going back to Bobrovsky, because we got off yes, topic. way off topic. <laughs> that's all right, though. <laughs> it, it's just fun, though, talking. Yeah, because like it was drafts. back-to-back picks. And you think, yeah. what if we went with Later, yeah. regardless of whether or not we're still on this podcast, I want to look at some other previous drafts just to see who's in the top ten for each mm-hmm. you know, draft class, which I think will be fun. Um, but uh, this is back in September. Brobsky told the Blue Jackets his plans. This is dispatch.com. Publicly, they're the team's starting goaltender and one of the faces of the franchise. Won't say what those are. On the first day of training camp and what it is his final year under contract for um, Columbus, was asked if this will be his last ca- uh, season of calling at Nationwide Arena home. He said, we'll see. Mm-hmm. So... Who was this? Uh, Bobrovsky. Yeah. That's so why everyone's kind of thinking that he's going to. Yeah. And if I, that's what I was saying before. It's like you can lose Panarin, whatever. You had him before. You didn't have it before. You traded Sod for him, right? Yeah. To Chicago, back and forth. There. Well, <laughs> Panarin, 
Uh, uh, Saad was traded to Columbus the first time. Then Saad was traded from Columbus back to Chicago for yeah. Panarin. And I did see this the other day. This actually shocked me. Saad got scratched the other night. Yeah. yeah. So, just keep that in your mind. Yeah, I know. And Panera wants to go to a big city, so they're probably going to want to get him back. Yeah. <laughs> Trade him back again. Yeah. <laughs> but because th- I feel like losing Bobrovsky are number one. Because who's their backup? That, uh, it was McElhaney, but he went to Toronto. They got cleaned by someone. I will tell you. Because. Uh, oh. First. Uh, Jonas uh, Corpusalo. Okay. Corpusalo is a pretty solid goalie. He is, but. To Bobrovsky's kind of... It's not so much. Yeah, Vesna went her twice since being on you. That's a huge loss if you lose him. Yeah. Because you need you need good goaltending or at least hot you goaltending. I know you depends have... Depends on the team. I know you're like the kind of like the uh, Capitals where we're, you can't really get past like the first or second round or whatever, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, you have that playoff that wrong. sucks, but... Finally, which is yeah. good though, but... But you know what I'm saying. That yeah, they yeah, have their true. problems in the playoffs too. And because the thing is, you can to. get away with an average, if not sure. We saw it with the Flyers in 2010. They yes. didn't win it, but you saw how far they got. Exactly because they had so much depth. Yeah, and that's the key to today's game. It's yeah, they had speed, it, like you skill forget about depth. it. But Emery was on that team too. He was. He was. Um, and. He got hurt at one point. Yeah. They brought in Michael Layton mm-hmm. and Bush, uh, Brian Boucher was yep. in. But also they had at one point, um, oh man, this is. Uh, you just need high goaltending at the right time. You do. At least near the end of the season, playoff wise, yeah. I forget who. I, I, no, not 2010, 2011, 2009, 2010. Because it was. Um, I think the guy's last name is like Backland or something like that because the Flyers had like an extra goalie because um, Leighton got hurt, I think, towards the end of the year and Boucher was the starter and they had this guy, I think it was, you know, Backland or, hold on, let me look it up really quickly, whatever his name is, uh, that was the goalie. Uh, it, yeah, Johan Backland. They even had a guy named Jeremy Duchesne. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like a play one game. Backlund. It was kind of like a Vegas last year. They went through so many goalies. Yeah, they literally went through like five in the first yeah. two months. I don't even want to get into that Vegas game. Yeah. Flurry's being himself again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I called it. Flyers would split against Vegas. Yeah, you did. Well, I so thought it was going to be a high scoring game, but. Not really. <laughs> Not really. But uh, taking a look now, actually, at the schedule, the Flyers are three and three. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of do a little review right now. Um, what at what point did we say we would go back and look at the records? We said what would they be through the first eight games? Yeah, I said about like five hundred. Okay. And they are right now. So for the first game, so I said they would split against Vegas, which they did. Mm-hmm. Lose to Colorado. Lose to San Jose, but win against Ottawa, and I think it said win against Florida. Mm-hmm. So right now, I'm pretty set with my yeah. predictions. I forget we went to New Jersey, right, when you were doing that? Yeah, I think we did go through yeah. New Jersey. So, yeah, so the first mm-hmm. eight games. I think I said five and three. Yeah. And you might have said four and four, or... Forget. Four, three, and one, maybe. Four, three, and one. I think yeah. there's at least like one overtime slash. Uh, there was one like shootout loss. I said yeah. or uh, overtime loss. I said, but yeah, because it's a fire. So that's gonna happen. <laughs> and hey, I was almost right last night. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of how it's kind of been. We've been pretty close to what we said. We said they yeah go about how they're doing now, but we kind of hope that something kind of kicks them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Because it's great. They put up five goals last night, but that defense didn't hold up. Mm. Unlike against Vegas, they didn't let they let one goal by in the last like minute of the game. <laughs> so it's really weird this season so far. But back to this game to uh, tomorrow. Mm. Uh, what are you expecting to happen? Or 
Against Columbus, this is an important game for Philly. That's, yeah. Because the Flyers, they're technically tied with Columbus. Mm-hmm. And a win would have them tied with New Jersey right now in points. Still in third because they have l- more losses. Um, I think Bobrovsky, he might stand on his head like usual oh, against yeah, us. Obviously. I think it's going to be a 2-1 finish. It's going to be a low-scoring game. <laughs> Just because I said that, I feel like it's going to be a high-scoring game. I say that because... Oh, maybe not. I was going to say maybe the f- because the Flyers... Well, I mean, the, I don't know why, but they struggle against Bobrovsky. Have you noticed that, like, like a lot? That's not really saying much, That's true. honestly. But, yeah, um, they, have, they have struggled against Columbus. But it's also been close games with Columbus, too. I don't know if you could... There's l- been a lot of overtime right. games against Columbus. And Carolina, I think. Yeah. I don't know if you can like look at individual players' stats like for goalie wise against I'm sure specific no but against specific teams. Yeah, they show it all the time. <laughs> well, no, I know, but like I'm saying, like just look it up like right now on the internet and somehow find it because I would love to know the numbers that Bobrovsky has against the Flyers. Um, what would you look at like career stats versus? Wow. <laughs> I started typing it, and guess what? Three options are that came up. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. Sergey Bobrovsky career stats versus LeBron versus Jordan, and of course versus the Yankees. Well, of course, so close, so close. But um, that that's just something you yeah. know to keep in mind, though. But he he has been phenomenal, especially against the Flyers. Mm-hmm. Uh. Excuse me, but I think it's going to be 3 1, 3 2. Um, my player of the game to watch is Pierre Luc Dubois of Columbus, mm-hmm. at least for the Blue Jackets to watch. Um, for me, I'm saying Travis Connecting for the Flyers, mm-hmm. finally potting a goal. Yeah. Um, I had the Flyers win again. Uh, okay. I'll say three, two Flyers. The goal scorers for the Flyers will be uh, Couturier, Raboyov, and Lawton. I agree with you uh, on for Columbus. Lawton's been pretty sharp. I'll say Seth Jones and Panarin. Seth Jones will score on the power play. Yeah. I um, I agree. Panarin, he's he's too good. He, yeah. He's going to score. I'm saying him and Dubois. Uh, Flyers win 3-2. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lawton, Konechny, and Vorobiev will score for yeah. the Flyers. So we're pretty much the same, except for you have Konechny and I have uh, Couturier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. All right. Nice. That's um, fun. So, yeah, to kind of wrap things up here, we kind of brushed on some things around the league. Yep. Talked about the game last night. Uh, uh, one more thing uh, around the league I forgot about. Uh, Jake Dodgson signed a, w- uh, a yeah. one-year contract with the Anaheim Ducks. Mm-hmm. Dodgson, he w- the reason why he's on Anaheim now is originally he, he actually got his con- contract terminated from mm-hmm. the Tampa Bay Lightning because he showed up to training camp basically – unprepared and what i mean unprepared is he his body uh weight was too much yeah which is surprising I, I, it was the, the bmi that uh that showed up was very alarming especially for an nhl player mm-hmm. um so it was you know they had no choice but to kind of terminate him because they yeah. felt he was not ready enough mm-hmm. and yeah but uh good to see dodge and find a new home i always yeah. liked his playing style he found um, a good home in Anaheim. Yeah, he really did. So they're doing we'll good s- this year. So yeah, we'll see how he does. Uh, but I guess until our next one, see ya.